Hello, I'm Arthur. Welcome to my lab. There was recently a great deal on eBay for the extrusions, aluminum extrusions like this. Um, there was a Kickstarter uh, project for a 3D printer and I guess it uh, didn't work out and so whatever materials were uh, gathered to build these printers for the Kickstarter, uh, they were sold off and uh, and somebody was selling these extrusions on eBay for really cheap. I couldn't resist the opportunity to um, get these extrusions, so I bought three kits, and um, I decided to build another printer. And these extrusions are fairly large, fairly long, so that would, was a perfect material for building this new printer, which I wanted to do at some point, but maybe not necessarily... Um, so quickly just right away uh, but here I am I have the extrusions and if I have the extrusions I might as well start building so I printed the uh, plastic for uh, hypercube and I started assembling the printer and because uh, this is going to be a large printer with a large bed what you're looking at is a 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter uh, bed right now that's that's what I had for a different printer that I was building um, now I'm going to use this bed for this printer and actually this uh, frame can accommodate up to 400 by 400 millimeter uh, bed so eventually I'm going to upgrade the size of the bed to this larger size but for now I'm just using what I have but because of this bed being so large the cantilever design used in original hypercube wouldn't really work too well um, there would be a lot of force uh, on, on the smooth rods and on the lead screw, a lot of bending. And so I decided to use a dual set of smooth rods and lead screw, one in the back, just like original Hypercube, and one in the front. Hopefully you can see this. There's another set of uh, smooth rods right here and the threaded rod. And for now, I'm just using a regular um, threaded rod this is 5 16th, which is close to 8 millimeter. Um, and that's what I'm experimenting with right now. And because I, eventually I'm going to upgrade to a larger bed, I didn't want to cut to the size this crossbar section right here, this part right here. I didn't want to cut this to size because eventually I'm going to move these arms farther apart to accommodate the bigger um, bed. So for now I'm using this con uh, new configuration that is different from original design where this crossbar is not cut to size and that will allow me to adjust the, the width. But because of that I had to redesign uh, the part that uh, holds the bed and lets it slide up and down the smooth rod. So here's the original Z carriage. This piece of plastic holds two linear bearings. They go in here and this goes on the smooth rod, goes up and down and the arm on which the bed sits is attached to this carriage and so the whole bed can move up and down. Now the way I mounted these arms on the crossbar is I just put the crossbar underneath these two arms. And here's the problem. If you mount this, because of the spacing of the motor uh, plastic and, and the drive and everything else this crossbar part comes really close to this Z carriage in fact it comes so close that it pushes on this triangle triangular part right here on this angled section of the carriage of course normally when this crossbar is just attached with a triangle like this that's that's not a problem but because I moved it to here um, this force here pushing on this part 
is causing all kinds of bending on my bed. So I redesigned this part. Basically I just cut out a little notch here, made this straight all the way up to a little past the point where this um, crossbar is attached. So right now if I mount this carriage I can slide my crossbar, crossbar all the way in and there's no bending, no misalignment. So this is something that I had to adjust for this printer for this uh, configuration of the heated bed. And I'll do some more videos as I make progress and as I ex experiment with this um, configuration. I know that uh, there's a number of people who are interested because they also bought these extrusions and they are building similar printers. So hopefully uh, someone might be interested in how I approach the, the issues here and you know, will benefit from that. Here's another issue that I ran into uh, when building my Excel version of Hypercube. In the original design, there are two parallel um, extrusions for the bed and a shorter extrusion right in between them that's cut to size and so it fits nicely right in between them. But because I will be changing my bed size at some point in the future and I didn't want to cut this cross beam to size and then have to throw it away and replace it with a longer one when I use a bigger bed I just stacked this cross beam on top of my uh, Y direction um, extrusions for the bed and here's the problem if you try to use this triangle it has these little tabs on it and so it fits nicely if you mount it like this, but to assemble this bed with a cross beam like, like this sitting on top of these two other beams, I would have to put my triangle in like so. And these little tabs prevent it from uh, fitting nicely uh, against the, the beam. Hope you can see this gap here that forms because of these two little tabs. So I had to design my own corner. It's, it looks like this, very similar to the original one, but I made, I made it wider. It's actually 20 millimeters wide, so it stretches the full width of the extrusion. And I've uploaded this to Thingiverse. You can download this triangle. And now actually I'm thinking about replacing all of my uh, corners with with these because I printed them in black and so they match the extrusions color um, and it just I think looks nicer so now I can use this corner and it will uh, fit snugly against the sides of both extrusions and this is this makes for a much more secure and rigid connection here Here's my test setup for the big hypercube. I have two Z screws on one on the back, one on the front, two sets of smooth rods, one set on the back, one set in the front. I don't know if you can see this, you should be able to see this. Uh, so two sets in the front, two sets in the back, and let's see what happens. Looks like this will work. I just need to tune um, the spacing on the bottom because towards the bottom one of the motors is getting stuck. But this looks promising. I think this is gonna work for the uh, setup for a big printer. This is probably the way to go. And I can't go any lower because I'm, I'm using my regular hypercube 
to drive this and its range of motion is only about half of this big hypercube range so basically the the uh, Z max kicked in now and I can't move any farther but looks promising the mechanical build is all done everything is completed mechanically now I'm wearing in the um, x-axis the bushings are printed in PET G and they were a little bit tight so they need a little bit of wear in so I worked a uh, little G code that just sends the X carriage back and forth and that wears in the X bushings <laughs> 